Hi everybody, I am going to talk about the problem solving therapy. Problem solving is a form of expectation for reaching a specific goal from a present condition that is not directly moving towards the goal but it is far from it or needs more complex logic for finding a missing description of conditions or steps towards the goal. In psychology, problem solving is a concluding part of a larger process that also includes problem finding and problem shaping. Problem solving has been defined as a higher order cognitive process that requires the modulation and control of more routine or fundamental skills and is considered as the most complex of all intellectual functions. In personal problem solving, some difficulty or barrier is encountered and further problem solving occurs when movement from a given state to a desired goal state is required. While problem solving has been present since the very beginning of human evolution, the nature of human problem solving processes and methods has been studied by psychologists over the past 100 years. Methods of studying problem solving include introspection, behaviorism, simulation, computer modeling and experiment. Social psychologists have recently distinguished between independent and interdependent problem solving. In clinical psychology, Researchers have focused on the role of emotions in problem solving and demonstrated that poor emotional control can disrupt focus on the target task and impede problem resolution. In this conceptualization, human problem solving consists of two related processes, problem orientation denoting the motivational or attitudinal or affective approach to problematic situations and problem solving skills. At the end of my talk, you will be able to understand the meaning and features of problem solving therapy, gain insights into the intervention or the treatment components of the therapy, identify the stages of the therapy and learn to apply the therapy. Problem solving therapy is a psychosocial intervention which has its roots in cognitive behavioral therapy. It enhances an individual's ability to cope effectively with both minor and major stresses and this in turn reduces the existing health problems both physical and mental. The major treatment goals of problem solving therapy include the adoption of an adaptive worldview or orientation towards problems in life such as optimism, positive self-efficacy, acceptance that problems are common occurrences in life and the effective implementation of specific problem solving behaviors such as emotional regulation and management, planful problem solving and so on. Let me tell you about the historical background of this therapy. In 1971, Drs. Tom Desurilla and Mav Goldfried published an article that described a prescriptive model of effective problem solving, hypothesizing that individuals able to cope more successfully with real life difficulties and strains would also be more psychologically healthy. In the mid 1970s, Art Nezu, working as a graduate student with Tom, conducted several studies that confirmed many of the theoretical tenets of this model. Along with other colleagues, they developed a problem solving model of stress, which was a precursor to the current model. In the 1980s, Nezu and colleagues developed a problem solving therapy based intervention which proved effective in the treatment 
of major depressive disorder. Over the years, problem solving therapy has come to be viewed as an evidence based psychosocial intervention for a wide variety of psychological disorders and client problems. The current model is an updated model which is based on recent research in emotional regulation and neurobiology. This model provides an understanding of how problem solving therapy can be an effective approach for helping people deal more effectively with the significant stresses in life. Let me tell you about the treatment components of problem solving therapy. Conceptually, any individual who is attempting to cope with problems faces several obstacles. These include the presence of one or more of the following obstacles. Cognitive overload which means excessive thinking or thinking too much especially when under stress. Limited or deficient ability to engage in effective emotional regulation. Biased cognitive processing of various emotion related information. Limited motivation due to feelings of hopelessness and an ineffective or maladaptive problem solving style. Now let me tell you about the problem solving toolkits. Given these obstacles to effective problem solving, the contemporary model of problem solving therapy focuses on providing individuals several skill sets that are contained in the following four major problem solving toolkits. Problem solving multitasking, the stop, slow down, think and act method of emotional regulation, healthy thinking and imagery, planful problem solving. Toolkit 1 deals with problem solving multitasking. The hunter who tries to chase two rabbits at the same time will catch neither. Because the human brain is incapable of multitasking especially under stress, engaging in planful problem solving can become very difficult. As such problem solving therapy teaches us people to use the following three multitasking strategies. First, externalization, displaying information externally as often as possible. For example, making lists, drawing diagrams, recording information in a smartphone. Two, visualization, using one's mind's eye to help clarify the nature of your problem, rehearse, carrying out an action plan and help to reduce stress. 3. Simplification, breaking down larger problems into smaller, more manageable ones. Toolkit 2 deals with this, the SSTA method of regulating emotions. If you are having difficulty coming up with new ideas, then slow down. When dealing with stressful problems, one's immediate emotional reaction can severely limit one's ability to think planfully and rationally. As such, problem solving therapy teaches us individuals to use the stop, slow down, think and act method of handling such reactions in order to minimize eventual ineffective problem solving attempts. Stop. By learning one's unique stress triggers, the client is taught to stop then, slow down by using one of several slowing down techniques such as deep breathing, counting down from 10 to 1, fake smiling, fake yawning, gum chewing, meditation, 
exercise, etc. Uh, here we have to note that all strategies are supported by scientific data. Think by using the following steps of planful problem solving, defining the problem, creatively thinking of possible solutions and making decisions about which ideas to carry out. Finally, act by carrying out the action plan and monitoring the effects. Toolkit 3 deals with the healthy thinking and positive visualization. The greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. Another major obstacle to effective problem solving is negative thinking. Therefore, problem solving therapy trains individuals to think healthy by recognizing when such thinking patterns occur and then arguing against them, substituting more realistically optimistic thoughts in their place or learning to think more about what to do rather than why such bad events happen. To accomplish great things, we must first dream, then visualize, then plan, believe and act. This third toolkit also teaches individuals to use visualization in a different way than in toolkit 1, this time to be able to use one's mind's eye to visualize having solved a problem and intensely focus on this experience as a means of enhancing motivation to work on problem resolution. Toolkit 4 is concerned with planful problem solving. In the words of Ben Franklin, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. This last toolkit teaches individuals to apply a systematic method of approaching stressful problems and involves the following four major sets of tasks or steps. 1. Defining the problem, clarifying the nature of a problem, delineating a realistic problem solving goal and identifying those obstacles that prevent one from reaching such goals. 2. Generating alternatives, thinking of a range of possible solution strategies geared to overcome the identified obstacles. 3. Making decisions, predicting the likely consequences of these various alternatives, conducting a cost benefit analysis based on these identified outcomes and developing an action plan that is geared to achieve the problem solving goal. 4. Carrying out the action plan and verifying the outcome. Carrying out the action plan, monitoring and evaluating the consequences of the plan and determining whether one's problem solving efforts have been successful or need to continue. Problem solving therapy is simultaneously a system of psychotherapy and skills training program. Some problem solving therapy based programs focus only the rational or planful problem solving skills whereas others offer a more comprehensive approach to solving problems, emphasizing the importance of problem orientation, variables such as negative thinking, emotional dysregulation and feelings of hopelessness. Helping people solve stressful problems usually involves attending to factors such as relationship difficulties, coping with loss, adjusting to civilian life after military deployment and so on, as they can severely affect an individual's problem solving skills. Problem solving therapy can be viewed as more of a system of psychotherapy through which multiple factors are addressed 
in addition to teaching planful problem solving. Problem solving therapy is based on these precepts. Stress can lead to a variety of emotional and mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation and feelings of hopelessness. Stress can also increase the likelihood of experiencing certain medical problems such as heart disease, diabetes, hypertension and so on. In effective real life problem solving referred to as social problem solving or SPS has been found to be linked to a wide range of emotional and psychological disorders such as depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation and so on as well as the worsening of various medical symptoms. Now let us see the effectiveness of problem solving therapy. Quantitative reviews and meta-analysis support the overall efficacy of problem solving therapy which indicate that problem solving therapy is equivalent to antidepressant medication. Problem solving therapy is equivalent to other evidence based treatments such as cognitive therapy and interpersonal psychotherapy. Problem solving therapy is more effective than supportive psychotherapy. The dropout rate for problem solving therapy is significantly lower as compared to other psychotherapies for mild to moderate adult depression. Problem solving therapy is superior to various control conditions. Studies that included treatment components that address problem orientation variables were found to be superior to those problem solving therapy interventions focused exclusively on problem solving skills alone. Problem solving in the context of clinical settings. In the clinical setting, problem solving therapy involves clients learning or reactivating problem solving skills. These skills can then be applied to specific life problems which are basically physical, ill health or psychological in nature. Problem solving therapy is utilized for clients experiencing emotional and mental health problems and has been shown to be as effective in the treatment of depression as antidepressant medication. Problem solving therapy involves a series of sequential stages. The case worker assists the clients in developing new empowering skills and then supports them in working through the stages of therapy to determine and implement the solution selected by the client. Many experienced case workers will identify their own existing problem solving skills. Learning about problem solving therapy may involve refining and focusing these skills. Problem solving therapy is sometimes referred to as structured problem solving. It is one of the focused psychological strategies and it is referred to as problem solving skills and training. Once these skills have been developed, clients may find them useful to apply to future problems. This therapy has been described as pragmatic, effective and easy to learn. It is an approach that makes sense to clients and professionals, does not require years of training and is effective in primary care settings. It has been described as well suited to general practice and may be undertaken during 15 to 30 minute consultations. Problem solving therapy takes its a theoretical base from social problem solving theory which identifies three distinct sequential phases for addressing problems. First, discovery. Second, performance. Third, verification. Initially, the techniques of social problem solving emerged in response to empirical observations including that people experiencing depression 
exhibit a reduced capacity to resolve personal and social problems. Problem solving therapy specifically for use in primary care was then developed. Problem solving therapy has been shown to be effective for many common mental health conditions seen by mental health professionals including depression and anxiety. Most research has focused on depression. In randomized controlled trials when delivered by case workers to clients experiencing major depression, problem solving therapy has been shown to be more effective than placebo and equally as effective as antidepressant medication. For clients experiencing anxiety, the benefit from problem solving therapy is less well established. It has been suggested that it is most effective with the selected clients experiencing more severe symptoms who have not benefited from usual case worker care. Problem solving therapy may also assist a group of clients often seen by case workers, those who feel overwhelmed by multiple problems but who have not yet developed a specific assessment or diagnosis. Essential to problem solving therapy as an evidence based uh, therapeutic approach is that the clinician helps a client to become empowered to learn to solve problems for themselves. The caseworker's role is to work through the stages of problem solving therapy in a structured sequential way to determine and to implement the solution selected by the client through stages that have been described previously. Let me just mention the stages of problem solving therapy. The case worker or the therapist introduces a concept of problem solving therapy and its stages. The client identifies the problem to be addressed. The case worker may ask questions to clarify the nature of the problem. The client determines the goal he or she wants to achieve. The client brainstorms possible solutions to the problem that have the potential to achieve his or her goal. The client is encouraged to consider the pros and cons of potential solutions and choose his or her own solution. The client implements his or her solution. The outcome is reviewed with the caseworker and the client considers further action if needed. The client may progress to address further problems in this way. Let me tell you about using problem solving therapy in general practice. Using problem solving therapy like any other interventional approach depends on identifying clients for whom it may be useful. Clients experiencing a symptom relating to life difficulties including relationship, financial or employment problems may be suitable for problem solving therapy. Frequently, such clients feel overwhelmed and at times confused by these difficulties. Encouraging the client to clearly define the problems and to deal with one problem at a time can be helpful. By contrast, Clients whose thinking is typically characterized by unhelpful negative thought patterns about themselves or their world may more readily benefit from cognitive strategies that challenge unhelpful negative thought patterns. Some problems not associated with an identifiable implementable solution including existential questions related to life's meaning and purpose may not be suitable for problem solving therapy. Identification of supportive and coping strategies along with if appropriate work around reframing the question may be more suitable for such clients. Case workers may find that they have a role in reinforcing problem solving therapy skills with clients 
who developed their skills with a psychologist. Social and cultural context should be considered when using problem solving therapy with clients including conceptualization of your problem, its significance to the client and potential solutions. Let me sum up. Problem solving has been defined as a higher order cognitive process that requires the modulation and control of more routine or fundamental skills and is considered as the most complex of all intellectual functions. Methods of studying problem solving include introspection, behaviorism, simulation, computer modeling and experiment. In clinical psychology, researchers have focused on the role of emotions in problem solving demonstrating that poor emotional control can disrupt focus on the target task and impede problem resolution. In this conceptualization, human problem solving consists of two related processes, problem orientation, the motivational attitudinal affective approach to problematic situations and problem solving skills, the major intervention goals of problem solving therapy including adopting an adaptive worldview or orientation towards problems in life and effective implementation of specific problem solving behaviors. Doctors Tom Dizurilla and Mav Goldfried described a prescriptive model of effective problem solving hypothesizing that individuals who cope successfully with real life difficulties are also more psychologically healthy. Since these early studies, problem solving therapy has come to be viewed as an evidence based psychosocial intervention for a wide variety of psychological disorders and clients problems. Problem solving therapy focuses on teaching individuals several skill sets that are contained in the four major problem solving toolkits. It is both a system of psychotherapy and a skills training program and can be viewed as more of a system of psychotherapy wherein multiple factors need to be addressed in addition to teaching planful problem solving. Problem solving therapy is based on the precept that stress leads to emotional and mental health problems and can also increase the likelihood of experiencing certain medical problems. The caseworker's role is to work through the stages of problem solving therapy in a structured sequential way to determine and implement the solution selected by the client. Let me sign off here and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.